What do you do in a long-term marriage, a long-term commitment where maybe there's been infidelity? And if this has been you, I'm so, so sorry. And it's not always a deal breaker for everyone. I know there's lots and lots of advice out there that says, cut your losses when infidelity happens in any form, get out of there. And that is not the only option that you have. It's never the only option. There's always so many more options, even when we don't think so. And that is an awesome thing for us to be talking about. It's a great topic for coaching because we're all about coming back to who we really are and what we really want and what's right in front of us. So what is it that you want? We want a better connection. We want more intimacy. We want to rebuild trust. So some things, right? Think about what it is that you want. And if you if you've taken steps, if your partner is available to go to therapy or to allow there to be space for you to talk about these difficult things in a more therapeutic setting where you don't have to be the one holding the space and doing all of the all the legwork to heal the relationship. And again, I know just saying it like that could get a lot of flack. There could be a lot of a lot of people saying that's way too much work. And I can uh, I can appreciate I can appreciate that there is that anger for some of us this these voices come out of anger for some of us it's a frustration it's this I, I mean I like to see it as a desire for us to have a better situation for girls to not see our sisters our our girlfriends stuck in situations that are just ugly and unsatisfying when we look at our friends these goddess women around us and think wow they can do anything why is why is she putting up with that and we all have our reasons conscious or unconscious that these things happen and it's not your fault if you're not in a place where you've already got your bags packed and you want to leave and you're out of there and there's no more then you know that's a very different place from being in a place where you want to rebuild where you want to heal where you want to do this with your partner and maybe it's surprising to hear how often this is not a deal breaker and in fact you could come back stronger you could really come back stronger because there is a you know there's a cry for help i i want more intimacy i want something i have a need that's not being met and if you can take out the blame, if you can take out the attack, if you can open yourself up to what's really going on, which is a really, really big ask for a lot of us, this is a really big ask, then this can be a very juicy place. If not only for your relationship, deeply healing for yourself. So let's talk about it. No relationship is absolutely perfect. And oh my gosh, as soon as I say that, I have that little devil's advocate on my shoulder that's all like, well, what about those influencers? And what about those people that say they're married to their best friend and they're still in the honeymoon phase? Um, I still say there is no such thing as the most perfect, well, Maybe we should rephrase this. What's perfect for you may not, it, it's, it's, it's not going to fit everyone's definition of perfect. And not every day and every moment may not be the exact epitome of perfection. And I don't know, your inner philosophist here, your inner philosopher here may say, actually, that is, that's the definition of a perfect life. So, but let's talk about this. When you have these speed bumps, these roadblocks, these uncomfortable feeling moments in your relationship where um, deep end here, maybe there's infidelity happening. Maybe 
maybe there's some really big triggers happening. Maybe the trust in your relationship has been tested and may maybe even pushed to some extent. If this isn't a deal breaker for you, or if you're in this in-between space where you're like, I don't know that this is a deal breaker for me yet. And I'm, I'm a little upset with myself or numb, confused as to why it doesn't feel more clear. Or maybe you're, maybe you're on the other side of this and just feeling more relieved that there's an opportunity for this reconnection to happen. And you are you're there to explore the options. My cat's just jumped on screen, so you might hear her. So what, what can we do here? What would a conversation under these circumstances sound like? How would you start it? Let's talk about this. There's a lot of talk about what boundaries should I have or what boundaries have been what boundaries have been pushed, what boundaries aren't there. There's a lot of talk about boundaries, right? What should I have? What, what would that look like? It's a fair question, right? And what tools, what tools should I use? As a Rory Ray method coach, there we've got all kinds of feminine energy tools and th this can be as simple as like mindfulness techniques all the way to some very very fanciful deeply immersive relaxation and energy building techniques so if you don't know Rory Ray is a, she's a feminine energy genius is what she is. And she has built this whole school and this whole method of coaching and coaching women how to live 100% from feminine energy, where we're taking our masculine energy. This is the thinking, doing, strategizing, planning, all of the doing, doing, doing stuff. It's like the yin yang, right? And our feminine energy, which is it's all about feeling and expression and being and passion and all of this. So all of this comes together. So Rory Ray has designed this whole, whole model of tools and there's more all of the time because we're, she takes it from everyday life. She takes it from her life. She takes it from her, all of her experiences with live clients and in all of the different programs that she has authored. It's amazing as well as her experience as an actress and an artist and a director and just all of the ways that she's worked with people. It's, it's incredibly cinematic and an artistic experience. So I love I love it. I love it when I see women in the Rory Ray Siren community ask, oh, well, what tools should I be using? I'm like, yes, we can work with this. Yes, we can work with this. What's in your toolbox? And if you're thinking there's a right way to go and a wrong way to go, then we're completely beyond the point here. What we're what we want to do, and what's really, really brilliant, if you can think of it this way, is we're building a toolbox. And you may not think you have any tools in your toolbox just yet. If we're talking about, oh, what's a tool? What is a tool? What techniques, what strategies, what coping mechanisms? How do you get yourself to come back to presence? This can be as simply as conscious breathing. Like that can be one of the tools that you may already have, but may not have known is already in your toolbox. Some people will like some, some of these, some of these techniques may be more strategy based. And the idea isn't to go into strategy where you are completely up in your head and divorced from your body. The whole feminine energy transformation, it comes, it, it's all about reclaiming this space where we're not pushing away love and we're not pushing away a man we're not pushing away what we want because we're so wrapped up in what hurts the pain right and 
so many of us have been trained, we've been told, we've been conditioned to not trust what we feel. So we're taking all of this back. And in a situation where trust has been challenged in a relationship, where you are finding yourself in a fight, a disagreement, a discomfort in a very important relationship to you, if we can't make it back to our most authentic self, where let's say I'm like at least 80%, 60%, if we're, if we're not going more into who we really, really are, then you're just trying to connect with some, you know, some, some plastic version of yourself, the masks, the ego, and that doesn't ultimately get us the love that we want. I think maybe I've so let's 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 keep going with this. What is already in your toolbox? And what would a conversation like this sound like? Well, let's talk about the conversation. And maybe one of the first things that we should mention here is that this likely will not be one conversation. It will likely, it'll more likely, be several conversations over time. And some of those conversations will be minute minutes. They will be moments that you have. That will be part of the rebuilding. It will be in looks. It will be in glances. It will be in how, how open your energy is. It will be in it, more than it'll be nonverbal just as much as it will be in the verbal. So don't put so much pressure on yourself to make this one or this first conversation about rebuilding your relationship mean the most. Because I know we we really feel the pressure of, oh my gosh, this is a big stuff. Or, and rightfully so, if you are on the receiving end of a breach in trust or um infidelity happening in your relationship then likely you may you may feel like this is a platform to 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 really let him know what he's done wrong as much as we might want to do this do check in with yourself because it's really not any of those things we need to come back to what is it that you really want you want a relationship where you feel safe where you feel like number one where you can connect where you feel got where you feel heard where you feel you it's safe it's a sanctuary right that's what you want that's way beyond what he what he's done and i'm so sorry this can go any direction and I'm speaking in it in terms of kind of black and white, like <laughs> a little bit here. So please let me know how this is landing for you. If there's a situation that you'd like for me to talk about, you'd like to talk about with me, write me, write me, post in the comments. I would love to read your story and see you turn things around, have you have what it is that you really want. And more and more every day, I see how possible this is for all of us. So this first conversation, it's not the only conversation. And if you can get that, then you may not feel so much pressure building up in you to say all of the things and make all the points, which ultimately has us all up in our, up in our head, up in our managerial self, our boss, our boss babe self of, you know, everything that this cost me and all of like the meeting notes and all of that stuff, where really we want to connect with what, what's important. What do we really want on some level? On some level, and it, this may not be the first tier feeling, right? But I bet you, if you're not ready to walk out the door, if your bags aren't already packed, if you're still there, then there is some part of you, there is some part of you that is relieved that he's there and that he wants to have this conversation with you. Let's say, let's say we're in a setting where you've got, you've got that set up. And if you're not quite there, 
we can make arrangements. Oh, um, hey, yeah, um, this feels really confusing and it would feel really good to talk. You can have your sad, you can have your mad, and you can still say words like this. It would still feel good to talk. When's a good time? Oof, there's a lot of feeling that can come out. And if you can, and here's another a tool for your toolbox, not as a, not as a strategy so much, but if you can get this skill of not taking out the emotion, but taking the attack out of what you're saying. This can be this this will be really big for any and all of your relationships because the person on the other side won't feel like it's attack. They won't feel like they need to defend themselves and this can happen with our tone, with our energy, with like and this is why we've all been gotten the message that we need to not show emotion. It's not emotion that is the enemy. It is the display it's, it's generally the performance. You can feel the sad, have that sad, just don't project it. And we can talk lots more about that. I think that is a really super important skill for all of us, for all of us to not just practice, <laughs> really learn, really get, really embody, really feel it. Because what while we're doing it, you'll feel this softer, side of yourself you will gain more access to yourself and there's so much about shadow work and this is where like all like the dark femme secrets start coming out and so if you're interested in that tell me let me know like I one of the books in my library on this is called the dark side of the light chasers and I just started reading what um introduction to inner interfamily systems. I'm really excited about this. It's all about all of these different parts of ourselves that, you know, we want different things. The angry part of ourselves, the sad part of ourselves, the all of the parts, all of them. And they're no bad parts. And the all of this comes back to being our most true and authentic self, not the part of us that is being run by an old fear, an old wound, an old trigger. So, and as we reintegrate and we are listening to ourselves, we become more expanded. We become, we get a bigger bandwidth. We carry with ourselves a, a vibration of being safe. And if we can carry that vibration of safety, security, of just solidness, on the inside, like, you know, you can cry, you can, you can be upset, you can have all of all the whole spectrum of your emotions, and also still be connected to that love, that deep love. It, it is incredibly attractive, it is incredibly healing for yourself and the whole world, I think we, uh, the whole world needs to see more empowered models of this and as simply as it is to say it it is it's a it's a big deal it's a big deal it is a practice to returning over and over and over again to yourself it's learning to gently parent reparent these sad scared angry frustrated parts of yourself and we all have them. We all do. We all do. So if he's already set, if you've already got a time set up to talk, that's awesome. If you need to set up a time to talk and you need help with that, let me know. We can do private one-on-one. -on -one. We can do another session here as a group and, and share it this way. Let me know what's coming up for you. And then from here, let yourself be in the moment. As much as every guru says this, be in the moment, be in the moment, be in the moment. That's what you want to do. What other feminine energy tools can you can you can you lean into here? 
We want to do a lot with awareness. I'm kind of beating on the table here. We're all about awareness. What's going on? And as I'm saying this, I'm trying to notice, well, am I leaning forward in my chair? Am I leaning into the camera? Am I leaning into the microphone? And part of that, part of that is that passion of that moving. And notice this for yourself. Like, in less scary situations, when you go like anywhere, any of the routine tasks, errands that you run during the day, during the week, I want you to just notice this. Notice your body posture. Are you leaning forward? As your maybe you might think that you have a straight posture, but maybe you don't. Maybe you're actually leaning in. Maybe your maybe your shoulders are curved in. Maybe you are. Maybe you're holding your your thighs a certain way, or you maybe you're clenching your fists or your jaw. You know, total and deep relaxation is another something that doesn't come so naturally to everyone. And oh. If you, if you, if you're someone who gets regular massage therapy sessions, if you do body work sessions on a regular basis, yoga, body work, massage, any of these things, you may find yourself more in tune with this in particular. And this could be quite fun for you to notice what, you know, where do you carry your tension? How often do you notice yourself in, in these like flexing? That's a, that's a sexier word than tension, right? Maybe how, how often do you find yourself flexing a muscle? How just fall in love let yourself fall in love with your whole body process. So there's a tool for you. It's just noticing your posture. Are you leaning forward? Are you leaning back? And another one of my favorites that I tend to use in pretty much every private coaching session that I use. So take this down. This is like, you know, <laughs> this is something that I teach to my private clients is to unzipper your heart. Unzipper your heart. Imagine there's a big zipper on just from your from your neck all the way down. And I want you to just unzip it. Just the imagery itself will have you feel fun. Just imagining that, like your whole energy will shift and your brain, your mind will have an image to kind of latch on to. And you'll get to feel how your body just settles in. So imagine your heart just open to him. Because that's really what you want. You want that heart-to-heart -heart connection. We, that's what we all want. We want that deep intimacy. And for better or worse, for better, we're the first domino here. And leave room to be surprised. Leave room to be surprised. So where can we go from here? Once we felt our feelings and we've oriented ourselves back into our body, we've opened up the space so that our heart is accept accessible. And again, back to body language, because this is such a big thing and it can be such a fun thing to let yourself start tracking is noticing, like, is my body posture open? Is my body language open? So like noticing if you, if you cross your arms, you're crossing your legs, notice this stuff. And you may notice, you may start noticing other people in the world, how open or closed their body, their body language is. And, you know, it's, it's nobody, it, may not be any sort of, you know, just how comfortable or uncomfortable that we are with all of this energy coming at us. And that's really, that's really what we're talking about here is reopening this connection with your man, with your partner, whoever is in front of you. And there are lots of, lots of ways to practice this in small ways that won't have you shutting down and running for the hills because let me tell you as we open ourselves up more and more and more even though 
even though this is one of this, this is the safest place, actually, this is the, the most secure place that we can actually be, it's going to feel, it's going to feel wild for you to have all that energy coming at you. And maybe we should talk about that. And this may be another session. Again, let me know how this is landing for you. Let me know what questions come up for you. We'll just, we'll keep talking. All right. Anger coming at you is, can you see that as love? Sadness coming at you. Because as you, as you start learning, maybe you've gotten a coach. Maybe you are doing deep dives on YouTube and podcasts and just learning as much as you can. I know that's how I started. I just got a library coach in a box. And that was, that was phenomenal for me. And I just loved it so much that here I am today. And I've, you know, so wherever you are, just start building to your, start building your toolkit. Your whole inner world will start to shift. You will have a bigger bandwidth. You're going to learn so much about yourself you're going to learn so much more about what it is that you want, what you really, really want, <laughs> as a, and as opposed to what it, the things that you have said that you wanted that didn't actually quite communicate the depth of what it is that you want. To put just like an end cap on this conversation, if you've, if you're in a space where you are reconnecting with a man where, again, maybe there's been infidelity and you love him, let that shine through. That's no small stuff. That's small, that's no small stuff. And if you can go there into that love place, I love him. And notice where you might typically go into, I need to fix this, or I need to make sure this doesn't happen again. I need to set clear boundaries. Stay with, I love this person. And notice your body. Notice how your body flexes, tenses, releases. Notice all of the little parts of yourself. Don't push them away. Don't argue with them. Don't argue with the man in front of you. Start here. I love this man. And see how that feels. I love this man and, and I want to feel good in this relationship. I love this man and I want to feel good. Okay. And then just go through these conversations because there will be more in rounds, rounds, just tiny little rounds of, yes, it feels good to talk about this. I'm still feeling awful and it feels good that we have space to talk about this. I don't know what to do. Um, what do you think? What do you think we can do? Hear him out. He may have some good ideas and he may not. And we could talk about all, I mean, we, we'll talk lots about boundaries and to, we'll, well, well, we will. We'll continue talking about all of this. So let me know what comes up for you. To boundaries are more for you than they are for anyone else. So I hope this helps you. Please let me know how it lands for you, where you are and your, your great ambitions for having it all, going big, having big success in love. And... I'm looking forward to hearing from you.